about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we Everybody, it's John here from Tutes U, welcoming you along to our, I think it's our fourth GCSE history session. Um, last week, I think we were talking about uh, the Weimar Constitution, got very technical last week. This week, we're back in familiar ground. We're talking about uprisings and revolutions. We're back to the, we're talking about the cat putsch tonight. Um, I'm here, uh, but I'm welcoming uh uh, both you who are watching live, if you're watching live, it's good to see you, uh, and anybody who's watching this on replay, and we know that hundreds and hundreds of people have been watching these sessions on replay, so welcome to you. Uh, good evening as well, good afternoon, good evening to Rocky and Duncan. Duncan on the left-hand side of the screen, Rocky in the middle, Hello. good evening both. Hi there, how are you? I'm good, I hope you two are as well. If you've not joined us for these uh, sessions before, we've got about 30 minutes or so of activities and exam gold. And what we would love you to do, obviously listen very intently, but take part in the activities. And to do so, we've got the chat window available in YouTube. Uh, if you would love to, if you'd like to take part, please do put your answers in there and we'll try and give you some uh, little response to those answers as well. If you're watching this on replay, you've got a little bit more time, you can pause Pause the video uh, and view as you're going along. I'm ready. Are you two ready, guys? We are. Let's uh, hand you over. <laughs> okay. Right. So the first task, it acts as essentially a recap from um, previous weeks and then just provides a bit of context for the cat putch. All you need to do, there are six events and you just need to place them in chronological order. So if you look on the left hand side with the letters, the dates are in order for you. You just have to match up the events correctly. In the chat box, you may want to put, for example, A1, if you think the Constitution was approved in November 1918. 
Um, but yeah, any events that you spot, match the letter to the number. If you can get all six in the time, then great. Good luck, guys. So it's a little test of uh, whether you've been paying attention in the previous sessions. <laughs> it is. Where does the cat punch fit in? What do you reckon? If you know some individual ones, but don't necessarily know the full order, you can just put that one in. You can put the letter and the number if you if you feel there's some that you know for definite. For example, you might exactly know when the armistice was, and so you can put, pop that one in even yeah. if you're not sure about some of the others. If you think too as well, how we generally work in history, you might be able to have a, a good guess at the cat putch if you don't know any of the others. <laughs> so which of these do you think came first, which was in November 1918? Two events in January also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give you a couple more seconds. I sense people typing feverishly away <laughs> um, at their computers. See what they come up with. Okay, shall we have a look at the answers and see how you did? There we go. There we are. So obviously we've covered, apart from the Treaty of Versailles, we've we've covered all of these events and are about to cover the cat put. So obviously Armistice, nice and easy, November the 11th. The Spartacist uprising is, is tricky, but ultimately when Emma Whitehorn is um, sacked, the, uh, the initial protest begins on January the 6th. Um, the protest eventually ends, or the uprising ends, the 13th, and Rosa Luxemburg and, and Cole Liebknecht are killed on the 16th of January. But I use that date of January the 6th because that's when the first protest is. First elections held on the 19th. It then takes a, a process of, of six months, as we spoke about last week, before the constitution is approved. In between that time, which does the regime no favours at all, you then have June 1919, the Treaty of Versailles is signed, ties a little bit in actually into sort of a long term cause for the cat putsch. And we are in a brand new year now, March 1920, the cat putsch. So that is the um, topic of today's session. OK, thanks very much, Rocky. We've got some quiz questions for you now. For each question, you will have 30 seconds to if you're watching live to type your answer into the chat window. Um, okay, so first one, the Fry Corps who orchestrated the cat putsch, so they're a very key, important body in this in this week's content. They had previously helped the government. When was that? What did they help them with? And why did they do it? You got 30 seconds to come up with some ideas for that. Do type them into the chat window if you're watching live. Great to see what you come up with. Okay, so a couple of answers coming through there. Shall we have a look what the correct answer was? So it was January 1919, 19, the Spartacist uprising. So we just heard the dates, the full dates of that from Rocky. Uh, remember this from a couple of weeks ago, if you joined us then. Uh, the Fry Corps were involved in putting down the, the Spartacist uprising. They were um, demobilized soldiers and they saw it as their patriotic duty um to uh protect um the german government from uh communism because they hated communism not because they had any great love 
for the German government, as shown um, by the cap putsch. Okay, anything to add to that, Rocky, before we move on to the next question? Um, yeah, 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 just the idea of, of their sort of hatred towards the German government obviously stems from the fact that they sign the armistice on November the 11th. But, but as you've rightly said, their hatred of communism um, trumps that. Uh -huh. Okay, so by March 1919, which is a year before the Cap Putsch, how many members of the Fry Court were there? How many men were involved in these organisations? Type in a number, you can have a guess if you're not sure. Shot in the dark. Okay, some interesting thoughts. Shall we have a look? 250,000. Yeah, okay. huge, huge number. The mm. Sorry, Duncan, did I cut you off there? No, not at all. No. Oh, no, I, I was just going to say, the, the this is important because it sort of ties in with one of the short-term uh, causes of the cat putsch. So the, the, the Fry Corps, obviously, huge number, highly influential, and by the time of March 1920, the government are a little bit scared, basically, that, that you've got this huge militia, essentially, that don't have, you know, true loyalty to the government. They're a bit, a bit worried and they look to sort of disband um, a few of the Fry Corps units. Now, that you don't have a quarter of a million people take to the streets in March 1920 when the cat puts actually happens. But this number is very, very significant because it shows just how in, important they are, just how, um, mm. be, well, because of that number, just how scared as well the government are of them. Absolutely. Okay, next one. The Cat Putsch enjoyed legitimacy because it was supported by which generals from World War One? So a couple of well-known famous generals from the war supported the Cat Putsch. Who were they? Let's the time on the clock. Okay, shall we have a look? Oh, Esme's come in with Lutwitz. Shall we have a look? It was indeed Lutwitz, General Lutwitz and General Ludendorff. Okay. Yeah, very very good answer, Esme. Well done. Um, Ludendorff's the, uh, the other one. It, I mean, it depends on how far various students are along the course. Mm. For instance, I, I've not got there yet with, with my lot, but in the 1923 Munich Putsch, which is led by um, Hitler, Ludendorff's partly involved in that as well. So um, Luden, Ludendorff is um, a, a regular feature between 1920 and 23. But look, Vitz, that's a, that's a tricky one. Well done, Esme. Very good. Well done. Next question. As a short-term cause, the cat putsch occurred for what reason? Rocky may have uh, given this one away, <laughs> but let's, have the, let's put the time on the clock anyway. See if you can come up with it. Okay, I think we know this one, don't we? Because I think we, it may have been revealed a little earlier. So the, the Weimar government had tried to disband some of the elements of the Fry Corps, some of the units, um, which had obviously caused anger amongst that those organisations. Anything further to add to that, Rocky? No, 
No, just just apologies for uh, giving away the answer. I, <laughs> oh, that's quite I do, all right. It's good. I, I do like the sound of my own voice, so I tend to talk quite a bit. I apologise, but um, oh. yeah, that that that's the one. That's the short term cause of the of the uh, okay. Of the, the now, as a longer term cause, the cat putsch was motivated in part by a rejection of which controversial treaty? I don't think you need thirty seconds to type this down, but see if you <laughs> see if you can. Yeah, do it. Absolutely. Okay. I think some of you know this, don't you? What was that controversial treaty? Signed in June 1919. We've talked about it already today. Okay. No, I know you know this one. Yeah, the Treaty of Versailles. Okay. That's it. So and that the, was part uh, yeah. of this stab, stab in the back thing that we've already talked about in previous weeks, isn't it? It's this, it um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, the, the Dolstus. I mean, you might you may want to, if you're writing an, uh, an answer, depending on the nature of the question, you might want to talk about what specific aspects of Versailles the Fry Corps mm. would have been particularly unhappy with. So, you know, if you can remember particular key terms like article 231 where germany have to accept blame for starting the war or the nature of the treaty the fact it was a, a dictated peace or a diktat and germany had no you know uh, recourse to try and find a compromise they were basically told what to accept and what to sign um and then lastly because obviously the fry Corps demobilized soldiers they have a this this kindred spirit with the military and so the fact that you're Germany was no longer allowed a, an air force or submarines, had troops with the army reduced to 100,000 and sailors reduced to 15,000. All those types of things really rankled. Um, so, yeah, there we go. OK, thanks for that. I'll hand over to you now, Rocky, for this one. Th thanks, Duncan. Yep. So um, pretty self-explanatory. So give me three <laughs> reasons why the cat putsch was such a significant event. Now, this is obviously a, a quick sort of revision blast of what we've just covered. So you might, might want to think about why it's important or why it's significant as a cause or why it's a significant as a, an event in itself or why it's significant as a consequence or what came slight, you know, just after. Um, that's often a, a, a nice way to try and think about um, this, this type of event and trying to think of three reasons as to why it's so significant. This music is a bit more my my style, I think. Yeah, I've got my guitar out to uh, accompany <laughs> the. Uh... I don't know. He's playing the bongos. <laughs> what do you think? What are those? Can you suggest some reasons why it's significant? I think quite a bit of what we've talked about already you could develop those ideas further those 30 seconds go really fast don't they 30 seconds isn't very long <laughs> no that's that, that's a tricky one so should we take a quick look then great now obviously these answers are, are, are quite detailed but you know not, we're not expecting that within 30 seconds obviously but it's a way of looking at how you can link different issues together so Point one is is quite important in the sense that, A, we've not covered it yet, but B, it gives you an idea again of sort of politics within Weimar. Hardly anyone's held accountable with a cat putsch, apart from sort of Wolfgang Cap, the, the leader of the putsch. He's a notable person that's imprisoned. Um, it shows, and if you remember a few weeks ago, we looked at 1918 and the fact that Aber, President Aber, has to keep a lot of the civil service and a lot of judiciary in place because it's the only way to establish some continuity. But the problem is by allowing the judiciary and you know the, the, the police force and the civil service in place, you get people that are still sympathetic to centre-right politics, national po uh, nationalist politics, and politics sort of linked to, you know, the, the, the Kaiser's time. So that's really important because it still shows how weak they are. Um, just, two, just, I, I, I'm just going to 
butt in, sorry, very quickly, Rocky, because yeah. I just thought we, ha- we haven't really mentioned that yet, have we? That we've talked about who was involved in the cap putch in terms of the Fry Corps, and now we've mentioned Wolfgang Cap and those generals. But this idea that of bringing back the Kaiser is, is kind of the, the the suggestion, wasn't it? This was what they were wanting to happen. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're disillusioned with democracy. Um, the, the, the Treaty of Versailles partly sort of enabled that uh, and and tip a sense of antipathy towards the the, the government to, to fester but then when the government tried to disband the fry corps as, a, as a, an immediate short-term cause that springs them into action but yes. yeah ultimately they, they want to return to the old order mm-hmm. um so yeah so yeah number two then the, the fry corps that they are successful in taking over berlin that's important as well um, but it only lasts for around four days because the rest of Berlin, essentially, the, the, the workers and the unions and the people that run, you know, the infrastructure, the electricity, whatever it may be, they, there's just a complete and utter general strike, which is encouraged by the Weimar government. So it shows that even though the Weimar government is weak, the people themselves are not in favour of something like the cat putsch and that and that far right nationalism and the return to the Kaiser, which is really interesting because obviously what we know what happens um, in 1934. Mm. Um, and then lastly, this is key. This often gets overlooked, and it ties in with two. The army refused to help the government put down the Freikorps, and that's because both the army and the Freikorps fought together in World War One. there's this sense of, you know, there's, there's this kindred spirit between the mm. two groups. So that's why the government are so dependent on this general strike. So it shows that a lot of things are hanging in the balance here. And you've, you've got that then, the, the, in the, to put down the Spartacist rebellion, the, the, the uprising, the, the government was reliant on the Freikorps and the, the right, and to put down the cap yes. putsch, they were reliant on um, the unions and the left. It's, it's almost like, you know, they they can only put down one with the assistance of the other it absolutely which, which, mm. great that's it and and when we look at sort of the weakness of of coalition politics and the nature of the constitution last week despite the good intentions like you say that they're, they're relying on the far ends of the political spectrum the moderates mm-hmm. just want to be left alone basically and, <laughs> and 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 live a peaceful peaceful life but it's so tricky because of the nature of this political vacuum Mm-hmm. Right. So this is a, a four mark question. We've looked at a, a couple of 12 mark questions. The four mark question is the first question you'll face on your paper. Now, you may have something written like you see here. We'll go through it in a minute. Or you may have um, an image. It could be a, a photo or a, you know, a portrait, a, a piece of artwork, piece of propaganda. And ultimately, the question stem is give two things you can infer from the source about. So very, very simple question, four marks. You get a mark for each inference and then a mark for the supporting detail to support that inference. So here we've got something from Feldman in 1971. And he, interestingly as well, going back to you, Esme, he calls it the Cap Lutwitz putsch. So the Cap Lutwitz mm. putsch, was hastily begun on March 13th, 1920, and ingloriously ended with the resignation of Dr. Wolfgang Kapp on March the 17th. Um, it's already been the subject of significant study. It is generally agreed that circle of conspirators had too narrow a social base to be successful. So sometimes, often, students might get a little bit overwhelmed with reading something like that, first question, to, to kick off their exam. But for me, how I would approach it is as long as you try to target some of the um, emotive language, the adjectives, the language where the, the writer is clearly given an opinion, you can then infer meaning from that. You do not want to summarize or ex- explicate and just repeat in a different way what Feldman is saying, or in this case, Feldman, but just simply look for particular language that can help you infer what um the the, the opinion he's trying to uh, get across essentially i think you've got some information on the mark scheme on the next slide haven't you i think just to yes. just to remind us exactly what what you're needing to do 
that's it. So we, you get four marks and essentially for each inference, you get a mark. And then once you have supporting detail to, to reinforce that inference, you then have a second mark. So the paper as well, it outline, it's really nicely outlined and it literally, I've, I've put it here at the bottom of the slide. So what I can infer, so you can keep it very, very simple, what you can infer, and then the details that tell me this. And I would, if it's a, if it's a, um, a written source like we've looked at, just directly quote it. If it's mm. um, an image or a piece of propaganda or a poster, then you can just refer to the specific detail um, and describe that th that image. But they are not looking for you to write war and peace here. It's a four mark <laughs> question. It's about building up your confidence. And ultimately, the way we work in an exam, you want to think about four marks is technically six minutes. So a minute and a half a mark. But for the four mark questions, I honestly think you can rattle through them in about two, three minutes and then save that crucial time for your 16 marker and your 12 marker where you get, you know, you get the the the, the big marks essentially that are going to make the difference. Okay, so if we look at the question again here, yeah. So can you tell me where you'd find some inferences in there or where, where would you look in that source? Yeah, so as I say, I would try and look for some of the, the what I would call emotive language or the adjectives where the historian is telling us his opinion. And then from there, we can infer what he believes about it. So, for instance, I think something like the, the idea that the, the putsch was hastily begun suggests that it wasn't very planned. It was instant. It was quick. It was reactive. So all Poor I organization, say, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not well organized. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And all I would do is is say that in a sentence and then just directly um, quote the hastily begun element or mm -hmm. or the fact that Feldman uses this ingloriously ended. Mm. Well, clearly it suggests it's a big failure. And if it's inglorious, it suggests that perhaps it went out with a bit of a whimper. Um, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't obviously write that in, a, in an exam. But, you know, it was a, it came to a disappointing end or you know a, a, a quick end that the fry corps didn't necessarily envisaged and then lastly i think the the point about it's generally agreed that the circle of conspirators had too narrow a social base i think that is very very key because obviously too narrow a social base essentially says that the cat putsch doesn't enjoy broad based support and we know that because a general strike puts it down. The one last thing I will say, Duncan, with mm. these four mark questions, you do not have to apply any own knowledge. In theory, right. you don't even have to study German <laughs> GCSE to get four out of four for these first questions. They are there to help you. They really are. It's about think of it as a warm up to the, yeah. the real exam when they then start testing um, your knowledge. So I think we've got a response on the next slide, haven't we? Yeah, so that's, that's it. Yeah. The sort of thing you'd write. Absolutely. And as you, as you can see, you can easily write this in, in less than six minutes. It'll take you a few minutes max. Um, and th this comes with practice to, to save yourself time and save yourself time for those big mark questions. So what I can infer, the cat putsch was a sudden event and not properly planned. That's a mark. Simple as that. And then you see there's a direct quote. That's your second mark. Likewise, what I can infer again, the cat putsch did not enjoy broad based support from the people. And then there's another quote to support that. And that literally will get you four out of four. Great stuff. Thanks for that, Rocky. I think that was really, really valuable. I hope people found that really useful at home. Um, you can, of course, uh, get lots of support from the tutor to website got loads of study notes and we have got some um resources that you can get from us as well including the weimar and nazi germany revision guide okay that's brilliant thanks very much wow thanks for that gentlemen really interesting stuff so uh, the uh, what i can definitely tell about germany af after the first world war is a very unstable period uh <laughs> yeah. the, the the left had had a go in the Spartacist <laughs> uprising, and then the right had had a bit of a go when it came to the cat putsch, and obviously there's there's more to be um, yeah. uh, unfurled as we go along. Is that a common one, Rocky, to have the word infer as an exam question? 
Um, well, for this question, Stem, and for this mm. paper, yeah, you will always have what you can infer. Um, but mm. we, we tend to, um, I don't want to speak on behalf of you know, all teachers, but you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's something that we would practice at Key Stage 3, yes. where students do the source material, and you're always trying to infer meaning. Right. So this is why they've, they've essentially applied it to a GCSE paper. Gotcha. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, wonderful stuff as always. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thanks to everybody who took part as well, who was listening and, and, and viewing and, and taking part with the, the, the answers to the question. Big thank you to Esme, I think, who had the, the best go of the evening in terms of uh, trying to give us <laughs> a response to some of the really tricky questions that were, were, were presented to us. Um, we have the PowerPoint available. If you would like to look at these slides again uh, and give yourself a little bit more time, they are downloadable as soon as this video has come ceased and come to an end and of course you can always watch the video again if you wanted to go over any of the questions that we've covered um thank you gentlemen another great evening uh, and we'll see everybody next time goodbye everybody cheers guys bye bye, -bye.